The Ten Commandments, and today we're dealing with a subject you're going to love. A dangerous world traveler, taken from Exodus 20 and 16. For the past uh, eight weeks, we've been working our way through the Ten Commandments. We're on the Ninth Commandment today. And with the teaching of situation ethics, of course, which is teaching that there is no such thing as an absolute truth, which is totally wrong. It is no wonder that 67% of Americans today don't believe in absolute truth. Now, lying and deception is so much a part of our culture in which we live in today. If you don't, do, if you don't believe that, go home tonight and watch the uh, news this evening. And, uh, and I promise you, <laughs> and see all that's going on within our nation, you'll find that lying is a very prevalent issue. As a matter of fact, according to the book called The Day America Told the Truth, it says 91% of us lie regularly. He said, well, preacher, I would never lie. Well, hang on. According to Proverbs 6, the Bible says God hates lying. Now, the reason God hates lying is because he is the source of all truth, right? So truth describes God's character in a drastic um, comparison today, or contrast, to Satan, who is the father of all lies, according to John 8 and 44. So Hebrews 8 and 18 says it is impossible for God to lie. So that being the case today, that means God is all truth, and the devil is nothing but a liar. So if you listen to the devil today, you're following a lie. If you listen to God, you're going to follow the truth. And if you're following the truth, then you're going to live the truth, right? So let's look at, our, um, as we look at this topic this morning, a dangerous world traveler, the great pulpiteer goes back some years. His name was Charles Haddon Spurgeon. This is what Spurgeon said. A lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is putting on its shoes. And that's about the truth. A harsh reality is we we're all, uh, we are all too comfortable with lying these days. You know, I don't even try to keep up with what's going on in Washington, D.C. anymore. They've got these special investigators. They've got these special counsels. They've got the special specials. And it looks like all it is is just a continuation of the same old lies and the same old charade of lies that we've heard for years on end. So I don't pay much attention to it. Now... Let's face the fact, you know, ladies don't get mad at me, but it is a well-known fact that ladies like to lie about their age. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm not going there. Well, what does men like to lie about? Their income, along with a whole lot of other things. <laughs> the, the what? Girlfriend? Oh, Lord. Lewis? Well, maybe I better change uh, my topic this morning. But anyway, uh, maybe I better go back to a couple that we just covered. Kids, they like to lie about their siblings, and kids like to lie about everything. Because we've all been one at some time, right? It's been said, yeah, I didn't do it. It's been said about lies. Lies are the cockroaches for everyone you discover, there are many more that are hidden. So the ninth commandment warns us, and this is found in Exodus 20 and 16, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Now, God detests lying. You say, well, he must not like me because I'm a liar. <laughs> no, he loves you. And he wants to convert you, amen. But realizing this, there's no place for lying in the Christian walk. But you know, some people, honestly, I've met in life, they are habitual liars, even Christians. They just can't break the mold. They can't break the chains of lying. As um, it's been said, some people would rather go six feet into hell and tell a lie than to stand where they are and tell the truth. Amen. So this comes, when we as Christians and realizing that we should not be liars, this come with, comes with no wiggle room in the Bible today. You say, yeah, but there is wiggle room because God forgives your sins. But 
He doesn't want you to continually, habitually practicing the same old sins over and over and over, right? So it's important today that you can get victory over this. As mentioned earlier in Proverbs chapter 6, oh, I got more. This is not about lying. I mean, you take that little short verse in 16, it's a wealth, a plethora of information there for you. And I'm going to give you the whole, the whole thing this morning, all of it. Y'all want all of it? Say amen. amen. You might want to retract that in a few minutes. But anyway... <laughs> Proverbs 6, the Bible says there are six things that God hates, and yea, seven, and an abomination unto the Lord, and one of them is a lying tongue. So actually, on the, on the, on the list of things God hates, lying actually appears not once but twice, and also a false witness against someone. So you go to Zechariah 8, 16 and 17, the Bible says, These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth. Of, to his neighbor, execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor, and love no false oath, for all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. So God gets real explicit uh, here and tells us through Zechariah the prophet exactly what he expects of us. So why does God hate lying so much? I mean, you think about that. Well, why does God, you know... God speaks in such an explicit term pertaining to this commandment uh, that we find here in the ninth commandment. And I want to suggest that there's three reasons why God today hates lying. And trickle through those things of lying today are other things, you know, that, um, that God's going to bring to our attention. So the first thing that we see that God brings to our attention today is, you shall not bear false witness because lying damages our neighbors. Have you ever told a lie on your neighbor? You ever told a lie on somebody? I'm not asking you to answer that because we probably all have to raise our hands, right? But lying has the potential to destroy other people's lives. And it just seems like sometimes people are destined with that mentality of trying to destroy other people. And that's not the case or should be the case for a Christian today. We should be lifting lives up, not destroying lives, right? So in Exodus 20, a neighbor referred to God's covenant people. So what God is saying, you should never lie today, and you should never lie about uh, fellow believers. We should never tell a lie on one of our brothers and our sisters, right? So am I right? Okay. In God's family, we should never talk disparagingly about another person. And a lot of times we get enough facts, as the old saying goes, we get enough facts just to be dangerous. And we run off on a tangent with stuff, and you know... We could take 20 people, put them in a circle, and, and, and I could start with a conversation or something and whisper it to someone, and we go around 20 people, and by the time we got to the 20th person, and I said, okay, now stand up and tell us what I originally said. Now, they didn't hear it originally. They heard it through the 19 other people that came, and it came to them. It's never the same. And if I had time, I'd do it this morning, but I'm not going to do it. But... It's never the same. The more, and it seems like that a lot of times, this is a human tendency. We like to not just tell the story. We like to add to the story. We like to add a little more spice and a little more flavoring to it, you know? And so, therefore, what originally happened, by the time it's told, it's so distorted, who knows what it is. In God's family, we should never today talk about one another in a discouraging or disparaging way. So when you come to the New Testament, Jesus took his, uh, the language here about our neighbor and teaches us that all people then are our neighbor in one sense of the speaking. So this is emphasized in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Look what he did. And that he went to the lengths of trying to help someone else. Something else that we seek in Exodus or we see in Exodus 20 and 16 and, uh, and that comes in the context of, of legality today. Um, you get the image of a courtroom here. And, of course, you know if you go to a courtroom, I guess they still do this thing where you have to raise your right hand. And I don't know if you still put your hand on the Bible or not. But anyway, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I, I don't know if they still do that or not. But anyway... Uh, when the Bible says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, it's actually today taking a legality term and putting it in that context. So the nation of Israel was 
was regulated by honor and being or bearing rather false witness against others could result. This is really wild. If you'll go back and you study Jewish history, it could result in death. If you would bear false witness against someone and it was found out and you were proven wrong, you could lose your life for that. Well, there was some offenses in Israel that were what then were called, what we would call today, capital offenses. And for Israel, telling the truth basically carried a weight of importance. Um, obviously, in our culture and our society that we live in today, it doesn't. Um, so we look at what Moses was given here in the law of Moses that God provided for him and the children of Israel, but not only them, but for us also, we find that what Moses was given then becomes very specific. There's no, as I use the term, there's no wiggle room in it. And so about how accusers were to be made, therefore, if they, if they bore fair, false witness, there was a serious offense that, that carried even a death sentence with it. So could you imagine that if you talked about somebody and you did it wrongly, they'd come and haul you off and, and uh, execute you. <laughs> that's, that's pretty serious, isn't it? So our context today is completely different today from this, but the need to tell the truth has not changed. You never go wrong. My dad always told me, he said, when you tell the truth, you never have to try to remember what you told somebody. And it's always the best, even if it's bad news, you still have to tell the truth. You can't doctor it up. You can't water it down. You can't twist it. You can't say it because you're scared that somebody will get mad or upset or whatever. You've got to tell the truth. So uh, lying may not result in physical death for us today, but the, the murderous intention sometimes that's behind a lie can still do great harm to other people. We can basically execute a person's character by lying on them. And we can make a person look very bad. I think the number one rule should be for us is if you can't say something good about somebody, don't say nothing. So have you ever noticed that when speaking about someone, we want to minimize our shortcomings and we want to maximize their shortcomings? <laughs> they want, we want to bring about their failures, but honestly, we all are failures, aren't we? Because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, you know, there, there's other ways today that we can bear false witness also. So there, there's the issue today of gossip and slander. I told you, this thing has, this, this one little portion of scripture is loaded. It's, I mean, it's a double barrel shotgun that's, that's really packed, jammed, slammed, real, ready to fire at you today. Then that comes the issue of gossip and we slander people all coming out of a fact of bearing false witness or lying. So um, the pulpit here by the name of David Jeremiah, I'm sure you've heard him or seen him before. He said this, and I think it's a good one. He said, gossip is the favorite indoor sport of many who call themselves Christians. <laughs> and that's kind of true, isn't it? So then we go to the point, you know, and of course, this is what's really neat about this. Now, we're going to have some fun. Y'all don't have to tighten up on me. Just get loose a little bit. We're going to have some fun with this and learn some things from it. Of course, we, we have other terms and phraseologies that we use when it comes to gossip. You know, well, I just want to share this with you about uh, so-and-so. Okay. So, buckle your seatbelt and get ready for the gossip, right? I mean, in essence, that's what it amounts to. What is gossip? This is the best way that I believe you can define it. Gossip is saying behind a person's back what you would never say to their face. Amen. Because, you know, when somebody comes to me with gossip, I said, are you willing to go talk to that person and say that to their face? <laughs> you better think about that. Most gossip is more than just what we call idle chatter about the affairs of other people. It seems like that um, we like to talk about people's shortcomings when we should really be talking about Christ and what he's done in our lives and the transformation. Because, honestly, we all today have missed the mark We've all been in the position today that we've sinned. We've all today got things that are against us. But I'm glad the blood of Jesus today will blot out our every transgression and wash away our every iniquity and purify our souls and put us on the right standing before God Almighty. Amen. So we are doing more than just being, a lot of times we're thinking, well, yeah, I've had people say, well, you know, so-and-so is nosy. No, they are basically looking for gossip. Amen. 
they, they have gotten proficient at it. When we gossip, and by the way, this is, this is just not a lady thing. This is a man and lady thing. This is a human thing. This is a thing that everybody does. This is a thing that all humans do. So when we gossip, it is our in, intention today, intentional effort today. What you do when you gossip about someone, you're discrediting their reputation. You are basically tearing them down. Now, we all today, we all have those shortcomings, don't we? And it, would it be far better if we tried to pray and devise ways that will lift up and help people in their shortcomings to help them make changes in their life that will be more fruitful. So, you know, there's a positive to this, even in the shortcomings of our lives, is to look at ways that we can improve ourselves and that we can help others. So even if the content of gossip is true, which many times it is, it's often stated uh, to the wrong person at the wrong time in the wrong way. So it's been said this, Gossip is when you hear something you like about someone you don't. Did you catch that? Gossip is when you hear something you like about someone you don't like. So, boy, I tell you what, you just like the guy in a steam engine. You got that shovel, and you just got your, your shovel in that coal, and you're just throwing it on the fire, and uh, you're just burning that person down. You, should, you have to be careful in speaking today because... You've got to have a goal today of making today. It's not to pull people down. You should have a goal today to lift people up. And I'm glad Christ never puts us down. I'm glad he lifts us up. I'm glad he's an encouraging God. Also, most gossip is never in a neutral position because I've heard most gossip that I've heard, it's always slanted. Now, listening to gossip is just as wrong as spreading gossip. Right? Sure it is. So, also, there's another one. You say, I'm glad he's getting off of that. Well, maybe I'm not off of it yet, because I've still got a few more minutes left here. But flattery is another violation of this command. I told you, it's a lot of stuff here. You know, gossip is when we say behind a person's back what we would never say to their face. We define that. And flattery is what we would say to a person's face that we would never say behind their back. You understand? Oh, you just look absolutely marvelous today. You just look so nice. You just got everything in place, you know. But that's as far as it goes. You know, folks, listen. Behind their back, we should lift up people as we lift up people to the face and encourage people. If we're not careful, gossip, slander, flattery can be misleading. Listen, let's look at Psalm 12, 2 and 3. They speak vanity, even one with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. So what the Bible is saying is, don't be a fake. Don't, don't come up to a person and say, oh, you look so nice today. I wouldn't wear that tie Jerry Butler's got on for nothing. I wouldn't be calling it a dog fighting that thing. I'm just kidding, Jerry. I love your tie. And when you're ready to give it up, bring it on over, I'll wear it. Amen. I think it looks very, very nice. You look very handsome today. Don't y'all think Jerry looks very Amen. handsome and Bonnie looks beautiful today? Amen. Yeah. There you go. But we got a lot of folks that fake it, don't we? They'll tell you to your face, you look less stunning and wonderful and marvelous and great and glorious. And behind your back, they say, I'm telling you what. I would not wear what they got on. And you know, when was the last time they combed their hair? I mean, I'm just using a little simplistic things here. So we break the command by gossip. We break the command by flattery. Watch out, Tom's coming to get your tie, Jerry. Amen. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we break the command by gossip. We break the command by flattery. And also we break the command today by what we imply. Now, these are just kind of basic things, but it's a part of what God's given us today because it's a part of our Christianity. It may not be a word, but, you know, sometimes, have you ever seen someone, I saw a little news piece, uh, it was in China or someplace, Japan or someplace, and these uh, news people, and this lady was standing there, and there's a lady behind her getting rid of, uh, was saying something, and this chick, she took and she kind of cut her eyes over, and she kind of gave the roll the eyes and through the head back routine, you know, uh, 
we see people that your body language today says a whole lot. You know, the, and the rolling of the eyes and a few other things that we do. Uh, and then there's, this is one that I think has become so prevalent today that just makes me literally sick, is these rants that people go on to on Facebook. Just ranting and raving and fussing and cussing and disgusting and everything else. Maybe they don't cuss, but I mean they're close to it. Man, listen, if you've got an axe to grind, don't get on there and tell the world about it. Tell God about it and let him give you the grace to get past it. Amen. It, I keep saying this because Facebook is really a great tool to show who you really are. And if you use it and you're on there ranting and raving, complaining, and everything else that goes on on that, then you're just showing your lack of your spirituality in your life. That's not what God wants. I'm not telling you to fake today and be something you're not, but improve on who you are and what you are by the grace of God. We've never aspired, none of us, to the point that we are a perfect 10 for God. We're all still below that. So we can work on ways to improve our life, right? And so be careful what you say because what you say and what you write is reflective of who you are. And it really reveals the, the issue of your heart. And your relationship with God. It's our tendency today to air grievances on social media. And I just got one simple thing to say on that. Because you know what? I just want to shout when I look at the screen. I just want to say, why don't you grow up? And start acting like what you profess that you are. So if you can't say something to a person's face, you really don't need to write it for the world to look at. So Moses is trying to convey the message that God hates lying no matter what the form, whether it's flattery, whether it's gossip, whether it's slander, whatever it is, it's wrong in God's sight. And let me just give you an equal, what all this equals to. It equals a three-letter word that's spelled S-I-N. It all comes down to a point that, that we've sinned. And not only have we sinned against God, but we've sinned against people. So now you've got double jeopardy going on for yourself. Man, get your life right, keep it right with God. The Bible says, and this is so, impertin it's so pertinent and important, and I just really make it the golden rule of my life, is to try to be at peace with all people. Amen. And, and to, to lift up and to encourage people. Now, sometimes you have to discipline people. Sometimes you have to say, and you don't do it openly, and you don't do it in a group of people. You know, you do it privately and you encourage people through the process. Not only do you say, you know, you really need to improve on this, but let me help you to improve in this area in your life. If you see somebody making a mistake, don't blare it across the world and put it on Facebook and, and talk about them to everybody and get on the phone line and burn it up. Go to the person and say, listen, man, I want to help you. And you know, what you're doing here is not honoring to God, and I want to help you through that, and I want to pray for you. It's never my intention to condemn you because we, we basically were all in that position of condemnation. But only through the blood of Jesus have we been delivered and no longer stand in that position. So today we really need to watch how today what we do and how we say and, and how we live our lives. So Moses is saying, listen, God hates any form of lying in whatever capacity that it come in, comes in. So God hates lying because it, it damages other people. Never say about others what you would not say, of course, to their face. And we must learn to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Because what does the truth do? Well, we see in Proverbs 14 and 5, it says, A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. So when you're uttering lies, you're being a false witness. Proverbs 14 and 25, A true witness delivereth souls, but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. So see about the issue of encouragement and strengthening people's lives? Let's go to the second one today. You should not bear false witness because lying distorts, distorts your God. So the primary reason God hates lying so much is because it distorts his reputation. So honestly, when you're talking about people, you're kind of distorting God's reputation. If a person is a Christian, they've been delivered. It's not our place today to, to, to bear tales and be a false witness for them. Uh, our God is a God of truth, and God always tells the truth today, and God always acts in accordance with the truth, and God expects us to do the same thing. So that's why Jesus declared in John 14 and 6, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me, or but by me. So Jesus said in, in 
to the Father. He says, thy word is truth. So that being the case today, the way of eternal life then is to know the truth. And if you know the truth, now God holds you accountable that you've got to live accordingly to the truth of God's word. So Jesus said in John 8 and 31 and 32, he says, if you continue my word, then you shall uh, be my disciples indeed. That just wasn't designed for these dudes that were running around with Jesus. You and I are disciples of Christ today because we are witnesses to his truth, right? So he says, and you shall what? Know the truth. What does the truth do? And the truth shall make you free. It's never in God's intention that today you be in bondage. The truth liberates your soul. So when the truth is absent, it's Satan that's work, at work in your life and not God. So today you've got to not only today receive the truth, you've got to live the truth and speak the truth. So the father of truth is God and the father of all lies then we know is Satan. Now, looking at this today, when we lie, we are more like the children of the devil than we are like the children of God. Uh, also today, if you're lost, you're living a lie. That's never God's intention for your life today. God made you to glorify himself. God made you to make his name known to all people and to live for his kingdom. So looking at this today, then God made you to be in fellowship with him. And there's nothing greater than the fellowship of the Lord. God made you today so he could love you and God could forgive you. And so he could give you the peace that surpasses all understanding today in the sacrificial death of his son. You can live that truth today. If you reflect that, then today, you know what? Listen, folks, you've got to live for God. You've got to trust Jesus. You've got to live the truth of his word. Good morning, Jim, Connie. God bless you today. Therefore, if you're lost, you're living a lie. But also today, if you're saved, you've, you've got to grasp and understand today that lying is contrary to everything that you are in Christ. If you lie, then you are going totally against what God has performed in your life in salvation. God didn't save you falsely. God saved you with truth. His word is truth. The cross is the truth. The blood is the truth. And when we apply that to our life, then we're delivered from the lie. See, the, the lie that Satan tells people today, just live like you want to live, do what you want to do, be whatever you want to be. God says today, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Today, he says, come and receive the truth. I change your life. I change your eternity. I change you. And if we've got that change in us, then we should be living that change today. So actually, if you look at it, here's a good way to say it about lying and about false witness and about gossip and slander and all the other stuff that's found in this one little morsel of, uh, of uh, commandment number nine. Lying is an act of spiritual treason. You are going against everything that the word of God and what Christ died for. So we have been called, you and I, we that are born again, we've been called out of the darkness of this world and we've been called into the truth. The truth is what? The truth is God's light. When he talked about I'm the way, truth, and life. When he gets to that middle part about truth, what does truth do? Where you were in darkness, now God has illuminated your soul. He has brought you out of the darkness, and he's brought you into the light. And if you've received the light, then you should be living the light. The light should be a part of your living every day. So when we lie, we run back to the darkness. We run back to those things that used to control us. And if, if, if you can trust him if you can trust God to save you today, you can also trust him today to live in his truth every day. You can live the word of God. So when we bear false witness against our neighbor, we actually are bearing false, we're bearing false witness against God. And that's not good, is it? Living a life of lying is in, incompatible today with living the life of a Christian. So if you're living today and lying and living in all these other things that goes with that, you're not really living the Christian life to the extent that God wants you to live. I'm not saying that Christians will never lie. Because you know what? I've never met a person that hasn't lied and doesn't lie. But what I'm saying is simply this today. If you're born again by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lying should not be the pattern of your life. As a Christian, if you lie, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. 
The Spirit of God's going to bring conviction on you. And you ought to thank God for that. Because that's evidence that you belong to him, that you're his child. So you, you, you cannot know the truth and love the truth and live the truth and continue to speak falsehoods and live a lie. So you can't live a lie and belong to the truth. Let me give you one more, and I'm also almost out of time. You shall not bear false witness. This will be a short one. You shall not bear false witness because it discredits our witness if we do. So then we think about, well, what is a witness? Is that those guys that walk around door to door? I'm not talking about Jehovah's Witness. I'm talking about God's witness, the real witness. That's a false witness. I'm talking about the true witness today. A witness is someone today that tells the truth about what they know. And not only about what they know, but about who they know. You know Christ, you need to be a witness for him. And Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So our assignment as believers today is to tell people about the truth of God. That God saves lost sinners. And man, there's no greater message. That is the gospel message. We're celebrating. Today is Palm Sunday. Next Sunday is the hallmark of our Christianity, of our faith, of Easter, the, the glorious resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, there is no greater message today to tell than Jesus died for lost sinners. And on the third day, he arose from the grave. And thank God he's alive today and offering eternal life and offering truth and offering uh, liberation to every soul that will come to him. I'm glad I'm saved today, and I'm glad, thank God, the truth, I've received the truth, and the truth lives in us today as Christians today. If we cannot be trusted to tell the truth about another today, how can we be trusted to tell the truth about God? Amen. In addition to telling lies, living a lie, it also discredits our witness for Christ. So the biggest lie we can tell is we lie when we pretend that we are on the inside, what we project on the outside. Listen, you can, you can have all the appearance on the outside that, boy, you got all that in a bag of chips. But on the inside, your life is a rotten mess. Folks, if, let Jesus change your inside. I'm going to tell you, it's kind of like salvation is an inside job. And it's like that little course, Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. The evidence shows up. So you can't pretend to be somebody that you are not. You may fool some people some of the time, but you can't fool God. He knows exactly what we are. Sooner or later, people are going to see through a web of deception. The fact is, God sees through the web of deception right now. You can't live a lie. You can't live a lie. So you may fool people, but you can never fool Almighty God. And the God of all truth cannot and will not tolerate people that live a lie and tell a lie. So don't, you know, think before you speak, right? And, and, and live what you portray. I mean, live the truth, be the truth, and point as many people as you can to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I close, haven't we had fun this morning with this one? Amen. Yeah, right. You just didn't tell a lie, did you? Amen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's good news today. If you are far today from God, you know, Jesus loves you and cares for you and died for you, and he can redeem you. And that's what's so wonderful about him. You don't have to live a lie anymore. You can live for Jesus and live the truth. And folks, today, what happens is embrace Jesus because when you embrace Jesus, you are embracing the truth. Amen. Amen. And he will lead you in a path of truth that will glorify him. And I'm going to tell you the end result. Whenever God is glorified in your life and you're living for him, he's going to bring good to your life today. Isn't he a great God? Amen. Amen. Take this ninth commandment and live it to the glory of God. Give him praise. Father, we thank you this morning for the precious word of God, for this Palm Sunday, in which we can come into the house of the Lord, and God, thank you today that the sun is shining, and we didn't have to shovel one shovel full of snow today. Thank you, Jesus, and that we could enter into your gates and into your house and into your presence with praise and thanksgiving. And thank you today for that privilege that we have to be in your house. I pray that you will today 
guide us through this worship service that we're about to go into. I pray that, Lord, you will orchestrate the music that will touch and inspire hearts. I pray that the preaching today, today will bring conviction that the Spirit of God will move upon us today. And, Lord, we're here today to celebrate. We're here to celebrate because our God is not dead. Our God is alive and on the throne and coming again. And we have reason today to shout the victory. Far greater than the sun that is shining in the sky, I'm glad the Son of Heaven, the Son of God, is shining in our lives that we today can be the witness that you've called us to be. Now, bless in the service and direct us and lead us and have your will and your way. And we'll just say, blessed be the name of the Lord, for it's in Jesus' name I pray. And all God's children said, what? Amen.